Welcome to Curly's Mailbag. This is the Thursday Queensland preview show for the mailbag.com.au. It's one of my favourite times of the week. And after seeing the antics of the bulldozer live stream, everyone now knows why I love my little phone hookups, my Zoom meetings that have been a blessing in disguise in these COVID times. And Curls... I'm amazed that uh, the head fits in the front door. I think on Little Birdie podcast this morning, you you referenced and likened yourself to Michael Jordan and said, "Do you think MJ never, never what? He, he'd love to take the last shot." And you were Michael Jordan and Pete Antonez as Scottie Pippen. Mate, how'd you pull up? It looks like you've been gaming with those headphones on. Oh, yeah. Look, I'm pretty well. Um, I pulled up terrible. Just to answer the first part of the question, I. I got a bit carried away after that thing one there in the last at the sunny coast socialising. Oh, you think? <laughs> um, oh, geez, I jammed some goat beers into me real quick. Um, so yeah, I'm in a I'm in a bit of disarray here. So the young, I couldn't find my um, plug in headphones. So the young fella's thrown me a set of his um, gaming headphones to do the pod. So I'm looking real sharp here. But um, yeah, look, it was it was. Amazing couple of days. I'm actually a bit flat, to be honest. I think the adrenaline was just pumping for two days and sort of woke up this morning terrible. Um, but, yeah, look, there was a fair bit of carry-on involved in that. But, um, you know, as much as I say I was only kidding around, when you really think about it, there was a few similarities there, wasn't there? Like, we were losing, shot clock was running down, <laughs> we had no bullets left, and Curly's 20000 at $6.50 on socialising was the get-out. Yeah, it was incredible. Uh, yeah, the whole the whole two days, it's, it's just a blur and just the lead up and the fact that we've got 1,800 people, we've just been absolutely swamped. It's been like a tsunami of support. We love all the believers. Um, the response from Tristan's been fantastic. It sounds like we're going to get a, you know, it's going to be maybe a seven series like the NBA. So it's, it's, we've done the first and we'll yeah. improve our, our tech and... Um, you know, the payments and all the, the processes, we'll get them ship shape and then we'll figure out where we're going to point the ship and we'll get another one going for sure. But um, the real world's got to keep continuing on. There's the Gold Coast tomorrow. You've got Toowoomba Sunday as part yep. of your subscription. Uh, I do Queensland Metro and I've got Brisbane on, on Saturday. We'll start talking about those ones. Um, if you want to have a look at our results recently, I think you're up 48 units with a 24% pot since the start of April. So you need um, to back up those statements. But let's have a look at uh, the big race, the BRC Sprint. It's only a $125,000 race. Um, we've got Kemitari up from Sydney against Vega One, uh, Outback Barbie, Victor M, Deep Image, Tambo's mate Cesar uh, is the field. It looks like, um, yeah, they, they're now moving north to try and find a race for Kamantara to win. What were your thoughts on the race, girls? Well, look, I think, um, look, he certainly has the figures, Kamantari, doesn't he? Like he's, you know, he's the, he's the, uh, the big sprue horse, I suppose, before he went to stud, but Obviously, he was firing blanks there and uh, he's been gelded and back to the racetrack, highest rated horse in the race. And you just have a look at some of the horses that he's ran to close margins and he just looks like he should be winning. But uh, they're not robots, they're animals. And this bloke seems to enjoy just running around next to his mates, not actually putting them away. So not sh- it's a tough race. Mm, it's a real trap race for mine and looking at the market, You've got the two big chances, Kementari and, and Vega One, drawn right off the track. And with the rail four, I'm just, if they both or one or the other get caught three wide, that puts them in a really vulnerable position given the price versus the market. Yeah, for sure. I, I would imagine just from the gate, I, I think Vega One will be behind Kementari on settling and it's just a matter <laughs> of whether Kementari slots in or whether it goes all the way back to second last and Vega mm. won back to last um, yeah, against some horses that can, you know, that can get home in, 
you know, 33 and change. And, you know, these guys are going to have to be breaking 33 to get over the top of them Yeah, for the last 600. The news through, Bailey Nordriff, he was our champion for the, the bulldozer, um, steering through traffic late to break away with socialising at the Sunshine Coast yesterday. But, yeah, he, uh, his ride was, was pretty lacklustre on Vega 1 first up. And it looks like he's copped his right whack. He's pleaded guilty. And I'm not sure, I haven't read the story properly, but it looks like he's got three months. So maybe he got a, a, lighter, a lighter sentence for, for pleading guilty. I'm not really sure. But um, three months seems a pretty big price to pay for the Queensland Carnival, given, I guess, the current state of COVID and things like that. What's, uh, what's your thoughts on it? Um, yeah, look, I, I think go, going on past experiences with Queensland, the Queensland stewards and how they, you know, how they arrive at these penalties at the the initial stage is that they go maximum or they go a big whack. Uh, normally the, yeah. And this COVID case with Zoe White, who was riding out of her zone or mm. the technicality of that, of why she was in that zone and shouldn't have been was the story. They go over six months, reduced to three months on appeal. Um, that's just the way the process works in Queensland. And then she can take, again, uh, appeal that to QCAT. So I'd imagine with Bailey, this race, uh, this instance in particular, did capture a fair bit of media attention, particular social media attention. And you can't help but feel that sometimes the stewards just want to take a heavy handed approach because mm. of that. Um, that's fine. The thing that really annoys me is the clear inconsistencies of this rule. We've got senior jockeys that. Um, if I was sitting in the steward's chair, I would be certainly asking questions on a weekly basis of horses just not necessarily drifting in the market. I mean, it looks like that the stewards are only looking at horses that are drifting and that sets off some kind of flag for them. But there's yep. many, many, many other instances and we've seen it in the last couple of weeks. where no, horses We've spoken about it on the show, on past shows as well. Senior jockeys that there's only one of, there's only one of three things that some of those horses that we've seen the last couple of weeks that have been getting beaten there's only three things that could be the case. The jockey is blind, lost his nerve, or yep. give it a run. Mm. They're, the, they're the three questions that the stewards really need to ask some of these seniors on some of these horses that are just getting snicked out the back and taken out of the race and then not you know, giving them the best opportunity in a straight. Uh, young fella has borne the brunt of, of this. I hope that they appeal. I hope they get a stay. I hope that they be uh, able to get through, um, you know, the same channels to allow them to ride and then we'll just see what plays out. But look, it's a really tricky situation, particularly when you've got a young jockey riding for his boss and that's the result that comes and the stable mate wins the race. There's, so, there's more questions than answers and, you know, and not a hell of a lot of questions are asked. So this one looks to have been knocked on the head um, with the penalty, um, we won't hear any more of it. Um, I, I read a couple of articles where there's no further comment on the matter, so I, I'd imagine that he'd just appeal and it'll be play on now mm. for the remainder of the carnival um, for Bailey. So it'll be a real test of his character to see how he handles it and how he rides going forward because, uh, you know, he's a, he's a talented young jockey and he gets plenty of opportunities and this weekend's another one. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what plays out there for sure going forward with how he rides and how he handles it. Mm, well, um, it's not a bad segue into the Doom and Guineas, I think. Uh, race 7, Vanna Girls opened up very short, somewhere between sort of 2.45 to 2.80 in the market, depending where you're shopping. And then, yeah, Profit, 3.50, $5, Ballistic Boy, Super Giant, $18. There's a handful of horses um, at that, you know, around the 18 to $26 mark, and then Selamade, 31, and, and bigger odds the rest. But... Bailey has picked up a, a ride of a runner that I back last start, Miss Penfold. I, I tipped it out for a unit at $21. If you have a look at that, that ride from uh, James Orman that day, he just sat back three wide and last and gave Miss Penfold, um, you know, set a real big task at the Sunshine Coast. And it was a, it was a tough watch for subscribers for that one. It could have really boosted, boosted our day along with a, a big collect there. But Bailey gets the ride. There, I don't think the map's going to sort of work out for her again, but I think there's a race in her somewhere very soon. Um, Tristan merlihan has got to share Milo Racing for with Smart Meteor. There's definitely a race in that horse. Whether it's going to be Saturday, I need to have a deeper look 
but and and you know I think it's Mr. Run as well. So I might give um, Tristan a call, and you'll definitely see it through my numbers uh, if you're if you're getting the late mail service on Saturday. Uh, that was a, a runner that appealed to me and, and was in my back book, and then and Cellamade is another one at Big Odds at thirty four dollars with uh, Robbie Fraud <clears throat> taking over and. It was another one that had a pretty quiet ride last start, and I think Selamade's another one sort of knocking the door. And I was really taken by a couple of her runs in the last couple of starts of her last prep. So there's there's three horses there at big odds that I'm not sure that just yet if they can win these races, but they're definitely horses to follow uh, through their preps, and they're just going to keep stepping up in trip and be more suited. But did you have a big lean on on the price of Vanna Girl or that race, Curls? Oh, look, not really. Like. <laughs> We had, I think we made Van Agurl a max bet. La- oh, we did make it a max bet last start at the sun sh- at the Gold Coast. Well, we've, um, been, we've been on her for the last three starts. Mm. Like, she, she's, she's good. She, her pitcher's on the dunny door. We love her. Yeah, we, yeah, we do. Look, and uh, look, she, you know, they haven't missed her. Like, she's been, she's been up and racing since January. And, you know, she had that little bit of, a uh, little bit of time in between runs before she got beat by Command and Conquer that day too back. Um, so she's a very fit horse, and um, I just like I'm just I know it carried sixty kilos the other day, and it you can mm. probably say it did enough. It did enough on the clock, and you know whatever else. But um, she's they probably used her up a little bit, sort of rode her a little bit closer to than what they normally did. You know, just to make a good thing of her, I suppose, with the weight and the gait. But look, she does map good again here, um, and then you've got to throw in the Waller factor with Impactful coming up. I know it's drawn wide here. Um, is it here for today or is it here for, you know, is it here for something, you know, a little bit longer, uh, you know, maybe next start or the start after, who knows? It's They're very targeted with their races and with the Waller camp. And, um, and, you know, then you've got to sort of work out Ballistic Boy or Profit, both from the same stable. Um, I thought Ballistic Boy was ridden, obviously was ridden colder last time and found the line really good on the big spacious track at the sunny coast and just the start before that they rode it closer to the speed and, and just didn't finish off at all. So, you know, I'm not sure whether, I'm not sure whether I would rather be, and then you say the same thing about profit, I suppose they rode it cold and finished mm. off good last start. So look, it's a tricky one. It, it could be, it, it's going to, it could very well come down to keep Like you said, keeping an eye on the track and just see, you'll sort of see within the first few races of what horse is going to get Matt favors. Mm. And yeah, like we say it, we've said on a couple of shows, but a really big thing about understanding Queensland racing is just the different um, track profiles. Like, yeah, different horses go well at Gold Coast and Doombin and then Sunshine Coast and Eagle Farm. They're just all very different scenarios and the form just doesn't simply translate. Uh, and it's there, there are trick shots and especially with, yeah, some of the rides that you cop up there as well. I couldn't agree more. Kels, speaking of... Uh, real weird setups and something that's got, you know, Vanna girl form. If we look to Gold Coast tomorrow, Command and Conquer beat Vanna girl last start. Now it goes back to a 900 metre benchmark 78 in race three at the Gold Coast tomorrow and has opened up a dollar fifty. Yeah, I was um, I was excited by the price. To be honest, I um, there was. The- Do you want to back it or you want to lay it? Oh, I'd be I'd be opening up the top sport account and backing favourite versus the field if they're up yet. Um, haven't mm. checked that actually. Um, look, it, it's not a betting proposition. Like I, I like the horse. Um, I, I I actually backed a bet against it on debut. Um, I knew I had seen the horse at the jump outs and I was against it on debut. I was on the on the runner up in that race and he sat five deep, four and five deep out of trouble circled and won impressively it was albeit a Toowoomba maiden but then you could just see there's something about that horse and he's been able to progress through there was I haven't confirmed this and uh, it doesn't really matter for for this instance here that when we're discussing this race but there was talk that the horse might have been sold or was looking to be sold to Hong Kong mm-hmm. um, and yeah I was looks it looked like to me this looks like a We've got to give him a pipe opener. We've given him a little freshen from his last win for whatever reason. Um, a little pipe opener before the his main target, you know, over the next six weeks over the carnival. Um, he's shown 
he's shown okay speed and had worked forward in distances over uh, races over longer distances. I would not be surprised at all if he's completely run off his legs here early. Um, and I just don't know whether he's going to have have time to get going. And um, these horses that he's against aren't aren't like nine hundred meter like slugs. Like they're not going to run seven hundred and stop. There there's some genuine speed in this race. And uh, look, even even just going through the markets and looking at a couple of fluctuations, like um, I think Peridae and the Great Boombino, a couple of other speed horses have have scratched. So you know he's as short as one forty five in some markets, a dollar fifty. So um, some so, of the figures, a horse like Arches Paradox and Desert Man, they got big, big numbers oh, over yeah, the thousand trip. Like, wow, it's a scary proposition, isn't it? The dollar fifty. I would be four days between runs. I, I suppose you live and die by your predictions in this game, and like, I, I just, I could not be, I could not see it starting so short. Like, I just can't, I cannot understand why anyone would be taking red odds and. Would not be surprised if this thing drifts severely. But mm. Severely. Mm, I can't wait for your uh, your set tomorrow. Uh, we've said, yeah, we keep saying it, but gee, the Gold Coast race is on Friday. There's just no rest for the wicked at the moment. There's just so much racing, and thank God because there's nothing else to do at the moment. But um, yeah, I'm going to sink my teeth into the Gold Coast card, and there's lots of good horses that sort of come up through that card. Looking at uh, the other probably notable races, race eight, Freddie Foxtrot. Uh, versus Grey Missile, in his stride. That was the horse that we liked at, at Inspect at 50s that ran third and then or, or seventh, I can't recall it, but we didn't follow up on it and we sort of uh, forgot about it and it paid, what, 10 or $12 or that the hard track we didn't think was going to suit it. So we let it go last start, which was a bit sickening. Yeah, very sickening, actually. Um, yeah, we were on it on, uh, on resumption off its good trial and it ran third on that wet track behind Snitch and Grey Missile. So... Yeah, didn't follow it up. Didn't think the firmer track would sort of suit last start. And um, sure enough, it rolls down the outside and blows them away. But yeah, look, this is um, yeah, this is a good little race. Uh, I hate that terminology. I can't believe I said it. Good little race. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not really for our show, is it? Well, they're all fucking races. We just hit a bet. I don't care if it's good or little mm. or what. If there's a bet, there's a bet. Uh, nice horse. <laughs> oh, we like angry horses that savage the line, don't we? Yeah, yeah. We like jockeys that push out of the way and take the run. Um, exactly. We're punters. Look, Freddie Foxtrot, um, I'm not going to say was lucky to win, but I was urging Love You Lucy pretty heavily uh, up the straight. It just had to duck back to the inside and couldn't quite pick it up. But, you know, in fairness, Freddie did, you know, sit on the speed and, and Lucy sort of had the suck behind him and sound bad uh, and couldn't quite, you know, get into the <laughs> clear, get into the clear and get over the top. But look, um, try and, uh, stable goes very well at home. He's a genuine, you know, he's a genuine horse and he's going to be very hard to beat. You've got horses that are just a few horses in this race, just taking up space. Um, mm. Stay is resuming that type of thing, and other horses that are completely out of their class. Grey Missile is interesting one. Um, didn't know what to make of it. You know, we were sort of on it the other day, and he zigged when he could have zagged, and whatever else. You know, it is what it is. Um, he goes a little bit of time between runs. Um, you know, over a month between. Uh, I haven't. There's no official trial. I don't know. There has been a jump out, but. Um, you know, obviously, he comes here very fresh. Um, I expect him to sort of go forward, considering that he's drawn inside of um, of the main danger in, in Freddie Fox. Right? Look, no spoil at the price here. The 1300 is going to be the question. If these two do roll forward and these two do race keen, um, and we'll just watch the track as we go along, but there could be some question marks um, there could be some question marks at the distance, like not necessarily at the distance, but a hard run 1,200 the last little bit. And we'll just see how the track plays out. And, uh, you know, just we might be able to find, we might be able to find something there. But um, at this stage, those two, look at the horses, throw in a horse like Inquiry that's, you know, drawn 10. I'm not 100% sure that's coming, but uh, has got really good gate speed and, you know, could be a flaw in the ointment as well. So no jockey down on that one as yet. But, um, yeah, well, when we record this, so... It does look like a, 
a really good two horse race on paper and going by the market, but I think there's uh, there could be an opportunity there to find something that could be strong late. Get a shower around between now and then, an inish, old inish stride certainly gets in mm. you know, to the equation as well. So, look, I'm really enjoying the Gold Coast cards. We've had a bit of success there as well um, over the last four or five weeks. Um, the racing's good, and look, I've really enjoyed the the, the COVID sort of uh, racing zones because we're getting ho- quality horses here at these meetings at the Gold Coast on a Friday, which you know you normally wouldn't see at the Gold Coast on the Saturday yeah. provincials. So, really been good betting cards. Mm, it, yeah, it's definitely suiting you at the moment. We might uh, we might do some do some more form tonight, and we'll pop out our best free bets on the email. We send a Friday email with the best around the grounds from all the states. So that's Dico Pistol, me, Curls, Rob Scurry up in Sydney as well. Uh, so jump on the mailbag.com to you. You can just sign up to that free subscribe uh, link down, right down the bottom of the page. So you'll get our free videos sent to your email every Saturday. If you have a look at the shop, you've got Curls set. I think it's twenty four ninety nine a week, which is about a dollar a race, which includes free rap music videos, which is great entertainment. And then, um, and then you can also get the Saturday four pack for fifty five a week, and that's Queensland, New South Wales, Perth, and Victoria metros. Or you can just pick up my winter um, Brisbane Saturday only, and and my Black Bookers for for twenty bucks a week. So there's different options at the mailbag shop. Um, you've been on fire, curls. We'll give you a little bit of a rest tonight, and can't wait for you to sink your teeth into the Gold Coast tomorrow. And yeah, we are Toowoomba Sunday. 11. The floor to yourself. It's sort of like the Michael Jordan dunk contest. It'll just be all about you. Well, we've got a, there's only 11 races to get through on Sunday, so good time to um, to maybe to maybe get involved and get the set and just sit back on the couch and have a good hard Sunday session on the punt. Should be good fun. 11. Wow. Just bet until you drop. Yep. Righto, big fella. I'll uh, I'll speak to you uh, tonight on the chat when we, uh, we we look through the rest of the races. But thanks very much. Know you're tired, and uh, you just keep that MVP trophy up there, big boy. Oh, it won't be leaving too. F- it actually, it's oh, never, you. It's never <laughs> far away. Never too, <laughs> <You are. laughs> thanks, mate. Thanks, Talk soon. Thanks, buddy. <laughs>